Greetings to all, and welcome back to the course on homogeneous catalysis. The present module is devoted to CH activation. In this lecture, I will provide a general overview of CH activation. In the following lectures, I will describe the factors controlling reactivity and selectivity in CH transformations, as well as the main mechanisms in CH activation. This will be followed by lectures devoted to the modern directions in CH activation. Finally, I will present selected works on the practical applications of CH transformations. Let's start with definitions. First of all, it should be mentioned that in the modern chemical literature, quite often you may face other synonyms of CH activation. The most commonly applied synonyms are CH transformation and CH functionalization. However, depending on the specific transformation, you may see a number of other synonyms, such as CH aerylation, CH amination, CH halogenation, etc. The most frequently used definition for CH activation was given by Bergman, which is as follows. Most generally, CH activation means treating a CH bond in some way that allows a reagent to react rapidly with the carbon atom. This activation can be achieved by most transition metals, which can serve as catalysts. As you may recall from the preceding module on cross-couplings in organic chemistry, a cross-coupling reaction is a reaction where two fragments are joined together with the aid of a metal catalyst. Here, it is not important what type of bonds are being activated in the process of joining two fragments together. In other words, CH activations can be considered a specific case of cross-couplings where at least one CH bond is activated in the process of constructing a new bond. As you will learn later in this module, CH activations have many similarities with the cross-coupling studied earlier. Besides cross-couplings, there is another group of well-known transformations that can be confused with CH activations. I am talking about electrophilic aromatic substitutions. Here too, CH bonds are transformed into carbon-carbon or carbon-heteroatom bonds, and very often, this process is facilitated by an acid used as a catalyst. Electrophilic aromatic substitutions are not considered CH activations because the catalyst does not activate the CH bonds. Instead, it is responsible for the generation of cationic intermediates. Moreover, electrophilic aromatic substitutions have many drawbacks and limitations. They are confined to aromatic compounds and are effective only on electron-rich systems. Another significant issue is the poor selectivity and the necessity to employ highly reactive and corrosive reagents. For instance, let's consider nitration. It works effectively only for electron-rich systems like phenols, and stopping the reaction after introducing one nitro group is challenging. Attempting to do so will likely result in a mixture of regioisomers, and in addition, it may lead to a significant explosion. Modern developments in transition metal-catalyzed CH transformations address most of the problems inherent to electrophilic aromatic substitution. As I will demonstrate later, using transition metal catalysis allows for the selective functionalization of all classes of organic compounds, including electron-deficient RNs and aliphatic compounds. To the best of my knowledge, the first transition metal-catalyzed CH transformation was developed by Fujiwara and his co-workers in 1967. Initially, they found that stoichiometric quantities of palladium acetate could be used for the olefination of benzene with styrene. Furthermore, they discovered that, in the presence of an oxidant, palladium acetate could be used as a catalyst. In the beginning of the 1970s, Schulpen and Schillov developed the platinum-catalyzed CH halogenation and hydroxylation of alkanes. In the case of halogenation, they demonstrated that the reaction does not involve radicals which is in agreement with the halogenation of the terminal methyl group. This is not typical for radical halogenation, which predominantly occurs at secondary carbons. Further progress was achieved again in Fujiwara's group in the 1980s. They showed that unfunctionalized benzene can be carboxylated using palladium catalysis and carbon monoxide. The rhodium-catalyzed CH insertion of carbons was developed during the same period. This topic will be covered in detail in the lecture devoted to metal carbene complexes. The final, historically important CH transformation I want to highlight is the iridium-catalyzed olefination of alkanes developed by Felkin and Crabtree during the 80s. This reaction later found some industrial applications. Now, let's see how popular this topic is and why it became so popular. On this chart, one can observe the number of publications per year in the field of CH activation. The number of articles has been growing exponentially, especially within the last decade crossing the threshold of 1,000 articles per year for 2016 and 2017. Some CH transformations are quite popular, 
while others are not. For instance, in 2017, the number of papers on CH aerylation was almost 250. On CH amination, we had about 200 papers, while works on CH carboxylation were around 10. On the last chart, one can see the comparison of CH transformations in SP2 and SP3 hybridized systems. The SP2-CH activations are much more popular, which can be explained by the increased reactivity of aromatic systems and the ease of dealing with purification and separation of products derived from aromatics. To understand why this field is so popular, let's go through two examples. First, let's consider the synthesis of biarils. Traditional approaches to biarils are based on well-known cross-coupling reactions between aryl organometallics and aryl halides or pseudohalides, such as Suzuki coupling. In this case, one needs to first prepare the starting aryl halide and organometallic reagent from commercially available chemicals. The preparation of aryl organometallics is particularly difficult and time-consuming. Besides, it might involve the use of highly reactive and dangerous chemicals, such as butylithium. On the other hand, modern developments in CH activation allow the direct assembly of unfunctionalized RNs. As a second example, let's consider the preparation of secondary amines. The traditional approach involves the use of alkyl halides, which must be isolated from other isomers formed during radical halogenation. This is not an easy task, however, the real challenge lies ahead. Stopping the reaction at the secondary amine stage is extremely difficult. The typical outcome of SN2 alkylation at nitrogen is the formation of a mixture of amines and a quaternary ammonium salt. Modern developments in CH activation offer solutions to overcome these challenges. Based on the numbers from previous charts and these examples, you might have the impression that direct CH activations are the easiest transformations one could possibly try to employ to address the issues you are facing in your projects involving cross-couplings. Unfortunately, CH transformations are not as straightforward as they might seem, and this promising field of research is still in its infancy. To sum it up, in this lecture, you have been introduced to the main definitions of CH activation. We compared CH transformations with other relevant reactions, and I provided a brief historical overview of the development of this field of research. In the following lecture, I will describe the main drawbacks that limit the widespread application of CH activations, along with some potential solutions for these limitations. Thank you for your attention.